I needed collar beams at the insistence of the building inspector. I couldn't think how to make them out of wood, so I came up with this, a collar beam cable harness made out of 3 8 inch steel cable. Part 1 connects to the double rafter, Part 2 connects to the turnbuckle, Part 3 connects to the center circle which became an octagon when the turnbuckles were tightened. These are the tools and components I needed to make the collar beam harness. Cable cutter, swager to crimp ferrules, 3 8 inch turnbuckles, thimbles, ferrules, and 3 8 inch diameter galvanized cable, 3 8 diameter 5 inch long bolt, nuts, and washers. All of the tools and materials, with the exception of the bolts, nuts, and washers, I bought at eRigging.com. They have an extensive inventory, the staff is friendly, knowledgeable, and helpful. Here's a 3 8 inch equal 1 foot scale plan of the cable harness. This is a full scale drawing of how the cable harness connects to the double rafters. And this is an elevation of the collar beam cable assembly. Lastly is a detailed elevation of how the collar beam cable assembly connects to the double rafters. I found it impossible to cut the cable just using the cutter handles. I built a rig to hold the cutter onto a work table. Even then, I didn't have the strength to cut the cable. I ran to Home Depot and bought a six foot metal pipe that I could slip over one handle. That gave me the leverage to easily cut the cable. I had the same problem with the swager. I had to build something to hold the swager down on my work table. Even with the swager held on the work table, I was not strong enough to crimp the ferrule. Fortunately, I had a come along that I'd used on a project several years ago. With the swager held to the work table and the come along, it became an easy task to crimp the ferrule onto the cable. So here's how I make a loop. You've got the 3 8 inch cable at the top of the slide. Below that is a thimble, and below that a ferrule. At the bottom of the slide is the quarter inch come along cable. We can ignore that. Cable threaded through the ferrule to form a loop. I held down the ferrule to the work table using a clamp, then pulled the cable to close the loop. I inserted the thimble before closing the loop all the way. With a final tug on the cable, I got a nice tight loop. Here's the loop with the ferrule crimped around the cable. And one harness length with loops at each end. This part will go from the center circle to the turnbuckle. And all eight lengths complete. Here's the center circle before crimping it closed. And the eight lengths attached to the center circle that will go to the turnbuckles eight harnesses that attach to each of the double rafters. This part connects to the double rafter and this part has the turnbuckle that connects to the part that's attached to the center circle. I'd made the eight cable harnesses I just showed you but I hadn't made the part that goes from the circle in the center to the turnbuckles. In order to get the correct measurement for them I first plumbed a 2x4 from where the cable harness would be attached to the double rafter and marked where that attachment goes on the deck. I simulated the double rafter with two 2x4s and screwed them onto the deck. Then I laid out the harness that connects the double rafter and extends to the turnbuckle. Here's the circle in the center, the top left corner of the slide, and the turnbuckle lower right of slide. 
I need to measure a length of cable to connect those two parts. I used some rope to get an idea of the length of cable I need and with that I made the part to connect the turnbuckle to the center circle. It was time to drill the holes in the double rafters. However, the space between the double and cripple rafters was too tight for a regular drill. Fortunately, I had this angle drill that I bought for $25 years ago at a garage sale. I used an auger bit to drill the holes. I found an auger bit is way faster than using a spade or high speed bit for going through wood. Now it was time to raise the harness to its final position. This part would be connected to the double rafter, but because the cable was springy and tended to want to be straight, I used duct tape to hold it to the correct position. This is how it worked. In the top center of the picture, you can see the first two cable harnesses connected to the double rafters, and the third one connected. The tension on the cables started to get tight, so I needed to use a rope to pull the two parts of the harness together. One end of the rope I tied to the end of the turnbuckle, then I looped the other end where the harness is attached to the circle in the center. With that, I formed something like a pulley. By pulling the rope tight, I could easily connect the two harness parts together where they joined at the turnbuckle. Using that technique, I was able to complete all eight connections. It took a lot of finagling to get the center circle to become a regular eight-sided polygon. First, I had to equally space each harness section, then, tightening and loosening the turnbuckles as necessary, I got all eight angles to be equal. It took quite a number of trips up and down the ladder to get it just right. And this is the end result.